Now another way you could solve this integration out is using uh, different tools that are available in the appendix. And so there's this table which has the products of integrations or the product integration tables. And they're usually available in the back cover or in appendices of various structural analysis textbooks. And what they do is basically they give you a way to quickly do the integral without having to come up with moment functions. So here, so for instance, to calculate this integral, and instead of using the moment functions, I look at the shapes of the moment diagrams associated with the virtual moment and the real moment. And so what I like to do is I like to draw in the shape of the moments associated with this integral. So m prime was a the virtual moment, which was a rectangular box right here with a negative one value over three meters. And for the curvature, the real curvature, I had a triangle with a v value of negative 30. And really, this is a curvature. So I would write negative 30 over EI so that I don't forget that. right? And then here, this length over here was 3 meters as well. And when I make this substitution, I, I look at my, my product tables. I am using this textbook, Golly and Neville. I don't recommend this book if you're a first time student in structural analysis. But if you need a handbook to review concepts, this book is perfect. It's got almost everything. But if I look at my product integration tables, I see from Golly and Neville that a rectangle and a triangle that looks like this, where this is B, and this is L, L, and this is a, this integration product is equal to one half a b l. For this, I would have one half negative one times b, which is negative thirty over e i times l, which is three meters. And this would be, uh, let's see, negative thirty times three is ninety divided by two. Negative negative positive, so positive forty five over e i. Oops, and I almost forgot all the units. Shame on me. Where I can cancel out this kilonewton meter here, and this would have been in units of kilonewton meter squared. And if we talked about the units already and what happens to it, and this theta b plus 45 says that point b rotates clockwise in the direction or in the same direction where I applied that unit load. All right, so that's another way, especially if the charts are there and they're handy, and especially if your if your moments are matching the moments in the charts. This is a fast and convenient way to come up with the integrations. So now let's go ahead and apply the steps that or the process that we need to, to calculate the deflection at point B. So that means we're going to repeat steps three, four, and five in order to determine the deflection at point B. So what we're going to do is go ahead and apply the external virtual load. And again, the only things you have to worry about here are location and what you think the direction is. And if I draw that out over here, I'll just have a cantilever. And I'm applying the unit virtual load at point B of one kilonewton. And basically by me pointing this force downwards, I'm assuming that point B is gonna move down. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the virtual V and M diagrams, which again requires that you do a, draw a free body diagram, use equilibrium equations for reactions, and then draw the shear and moment diagrams. Boom, there's my vertical reaction, I'll call that AY prime, my horizontal AX prime, and a moment MA prime. And here, just from some of the force in the horizontal, I know that AX prime is zero. AY prime is gonna be equal to one kilonewton, and it will be upwards. And MA prime, with this distance of three meters, from some of the moments about point A, I will know that MA prime is equal to three kilonewton meters and this direction is correct or going counterclockwise and so now I can go ahead and draw the shear moment diagrams and the shear diagram this is just straight up I go up one kilonewtons no loading in between all the way across so it's just plus one plus one and my moment diagram I start at negative three increase linearly at a rate of one kilonewton meter per meter and bam zero at the tip 
here. This is negative three kilonewton meters, and there is my virtual shear and moment diagrams. Now all I have to do, or what's left, is apply the principle of virtual work and integrate. And again, that premise is saying that the external virtual work is equal to the internal virtual work. And here, because we're looking for displacement and we applied a unit force, we know our, our virtu external virtual work is one kilonewton times the displacement at B. And my integral, which I'm going to evaluate over the entire length of the beam, zero to L, is this internal virtual moment times the real curvature dx. And, I, and looking at these moment diagrams, I've got a triangle for the virtual moment. And going back here to the real moment diagram, if you will, I have another triangle. And if I look at my product tables, my integration product tables, I will be able to quickly identify that when I have a triangle and a triangle, this integral, this product, is one third a b l. And what I like to do is set up my integral and draw the actual, you know, little triangle shape of the moment diagrams that I'm looking at here. So I would have one kilonewton is equal to zero to L. My virtual moment diagram is negative three kilonewton meters, three meters for the length. My real moment diagram, three meters for the length. This is negative 30 kilonewton meters. And then again, because really what we're looking at here is a curvature is over EI. And if I integrate this out, I will get that this one kilonewton is equal to one third negative 3 kilonewton meters times negative 30 kilonewton meters over EI times 3 meters. And if I boom, boom, work out that out, and if I, let's see, cancel out some units, and here this will be 90 kilonewton meter cubed over EI. And as you might recall, EI had units of kilonewton meter squared. So if I were able to substitute values for E and I, I would be able, I would end up with units of distance or meters in this case. So this would be delta B. And note this positive, this is a positive result. And that positive just means that the direction I assumed for one kilonewton if I go back to my virtual drawing right here, this downwards, this point B moves down a distance delta B. But if we were looking, again, if we were looking at this displacement in terms of our plus V and plus X coordinate system, this point B moving downwards here to this location, this distance of this magnitude of displacement of 90 over EI kilonewton meter cubed in terms of the elastic curve or an elastic curve function you know in the coordinates of V and X the way we would describe this displacement would be that the, the displacement at 3 meters is equal to negative 90 over EI kilonewton meter cubed and again, if you're not sure about how that translates, it's all good. Just remember that you said positive. This one kilonewton was applied downwards. So basically, you're saying that this delta B is downwards. Hopefully, this was a useful video, and it was very detailed. Let me know if you have any questions. All right. Well, take it easy. See ya.